Hello. Today we're going to have Mr. Greg Carr, who's a well-known actor, producer, director, instructor from Harris Stowe State University. It's been a very special show today on The Bernie Hayes Show. <laughs> Welcome back. I'd like to introduce you to Greg Carr. Greg, welcome back. Good morning, Bernie. How are you? Oh, such a wonderful time to see you again. Welcome back. It's been about three or four months since you visited with us. And today you have who with who? who? Who do you have with you today? I have some excellent Harris Stowe State University students in our communication studies department, and they're going to be interviewing you today about black radio. As we have this book up here, The Death of Black Radio, we have a project for our directing class we're developing a documentary on the history of black radio in St. Louis. And, well, and this excellent book, The Death of Black Radio, is going to be one of our main uh, sources. Well, I'm flattered. That, that, I had no idea. This is wonderful. Greg, tell us a little bit about you. you you've been very busy since the last time you, you visited us, us here. I understand you just uh, left with G2C uh, to the mountain, on the mountaintop. Tell, tell us about what Greg Carr has been doing. Well, uh, usually around January we do... Uh, the Martin Luther King show, and we have a lot of people tune in. But this time, uh, instead of doing it live, because we're still kind of in the in-between for COVID, sure. uh, we did what we call a live stream, and we did some Facebook Live, and so we were able to perform this particular production at, at a church, and it went very well. So, so we're very excited about Call to Conscious Theater, and we're looking forward to doing um, the mountaintop again. Who is Greg Carr? <laughs> Who is Greg Carr? Greg Carr is an actor, a director, uh, writer, and definitely an instructor and a, and a mentor. Uh, I, I really love working with young people, and they give me a lot of inspiration. And, and definitely somebody, I, I want to be known as somebody who's been a champion for the black community, too, because we, we need champions in our community. Greg, you're also a groundbreaker. You've done so many wonderful things, so many, and you opened so many doors to other people uh, with your activism. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, about, I guess, eight years, it's, it's hard to believe it's been eight years since uh, the, the, the Mike Brown incident in Ferguson. Uh, I, I used to do a lot of uh, protesting back in college, but when I learned about the Ferguson protest, I, I realized I didn't run as fast anymore, so I had to learn a different way to protest. So I had an opportunity to do some interviews on the Internet, and then the Internet then led to NPR and other interviews, so I had some wonderful opportunities to use the social media and the media itself to expand upon my activism. You also changed some negative things in culture at the Southern Illinois University campus. Tell us about that. Yes. Uh, back at uh, SIUE Edwardsville back in the day, we, we had some, some, some issues back there, uh, a lot of representation not happening. And so I, I was glad to be able to teach there for a year and to add some uh, great opportunities for our students to be able to uh, do some acting and to do some producing. And, and, and one of the, the best people that have come out of that is, is a young man named Joel uh, P.E. King, who's now an actor and a director in Hollywood right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think people know about you, what you've done, the strides you've made, Greg? Do your students know who Greg Carr really is? They're beginning to know. Uh, and they, uh, I've, I've had a chance to show them a, a clip from my film, and they, they kind of laugh. So we, we get a big laugh. I tell them, you know, your professor's a, a movie star. And they're like, what? Let's, let's see it. Let's see it. You know, because, you know, this, this generation, you got to show them. So I show them the, the video clip. They go, wow. I said, yeah, I got a Hollywood credit, man. So I'm, I'm a star. So <laughs> I've made three movies, too, that I don't think you, you were even know about. I got I to gotta, gotta get them to you. So, Greg, what's your ambition? What's your vision for these children? Well, my ambition for uh, these young people is for them to make a difference in the world and to use their communication studies degree to change the world uh, in whatever field that they're going to, whether it's in television, radio, law, it doesn't matter, politics, wherever they may go, that's our hope is they will make a positive impact on the world and, and be role models for people coming up after them. Do they realize the importance of people behind the mic and behind the camera as opposed to being on mic and on camera all the time? Well, I think that's what we're learning here today. I, and I think that's what we learned the entire semester in our directing class, that 
everybody's going to take a, a turn with this documentary. Somebody's going to be a director for one particular segment, and the others are going to assist them. So, so we're learning a whole team process to uh, the entire process. And what's the importance of education? What do you tell them about educa being educated? Well, like Malcolm X said, education is a passport to the future. We, we need it. We, we, we've always been a people who have uh, believed in education, and it will take us to wherever we need to go. Hey Greg, tell us about your education. Tell us about your matriculation. Well, I have a, a Master of Fine Arts degree from the University of Illinois. Uh, I have some, some background in theater and communications, and, and currently I'm uh, working on my Ph.D. in American Studies at St. Louis University, and we're hoping to be finished in about a year and a half. So, Greg, why did you choose theater instead of sports? <laughs> why did I choose theater instead of sports? Well, actually, I chose sports first, and while I was taking a break off of playing sports, uh, I, I think I was at Tarkio College where I did my undergrad, and I had to sit out for a year, and I heard that they were doing an audition for a, a checkoff play called The Three Sisters. And so I, I wasn't there the night before, so I snuck in into the callbacks, and, and the director said, were you here last night? So yeah, I was here last night. So I don't remember you. So I remember you. And so I was able to get in and got a, a part in the, in the, the play, and that's where I kind of took off from there because... I really enjoyed that, that opportunity. Yeah, because you could have easily played professional sports. So what really inspired you to become an actor in front and in back of the camera? Well, one of the things that inspired me was, and Bernie, you probably remember this, way back in the day we had what we called the church speeches, like the Christmas and the Easter speeches. Right. And I absolutely hated those speeches. So when I got a little bit older and my mother was a Sunday school superintendent, she said, well, you have to do something. I said, well, Mom, I don't want to do those speeches. She said, well, you got to work with the little kids. So I decided, well, I'll tell you what, I'll write some skits for the kids. I'll write the skits and be the playwright and be the director. And I thought, ha, 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 this will be fun. I don't have to do the speeches. But after the kids did the, the skits, they said, when are we doing the next skit? I said, I, I, I didn't want to. So she said, oh, looks like you're caught. Looks like you're going you're gonna to be working with the kids from now on. So that's really how I kind of learned the whole fine art of directing and writing is, is through my little Sunday school uh, kids. And before we go to break, let me ask this. How much fun is it with working with these students? It's a blast. They, they, they keep me on my toes every day. They are intelligent. Uh, and they're just, they're just great. I love working with them. Well, we're going to take a break. But could you tell us who's going to be the first uh, one on camera for us today? Yes. Uh, our, our first person up that will be interviewing you, Bernie, will be Niaja Johnson. And uh, t tell us a little bit about her. Well, Niaja is going to be a graduating senior uh, from Harris State University in May, and she has aspirations on being a lawyer, and we know that she's going to be that. What's her name again? Niaja Johnson. Niaja Johnson. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with Niaja Johnson right after this. It's so easy to get tired out, burned out, and worn out, and that's why we have to let the rivers of living water flow over us and believe that God is doing a new and great work at this time, standing up to the oppressors that come from every different direction, having God wash us from, uh, clean from all the fears, the worries, the uncertainties, the what-ifs, and stand up for justice at this moment. Justice doesn't mean just us. It means letting the rivers of living water flow through us as we get in touch with God. This past week, I've been reading a book on George Washington Carver, a great man who had every excuse in the world just to kind of go through life. But instead, when he saw a problem, and he saw a problem, he cried out to God and believed him for a solution. He cried out to God at a young age, said, Lord, show me your universe. And he said, it's too great and too big for you. Well, Lord, show me man, how he's made up. He said, that's too big for you. And then he said, Lord, show me a peanut. Show me how peanuts made up. And what did he do? God used that man to turn the South upside down as he came up with all these different usages for the peanut. And instead of just growing cotton, they started growing peanuts. And he started showing usage for sweet potatoes and so many other forms of vegetation in life. One man calling out and letting the wisdom of God flow in him and through him. This is the first day of the rest of our lives. So let's give the Lord our life, not our excuses. Let's believe him like George Washington Carver did, to do exceedingly abundantly be all we can even ask or think. This is a glorious day, and he's promised to release his unlimited power in us. He says, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. He tells us in John 14, 12, Behold, I tell you the truth. If you believe in me, Jesus said, you can do the very works I do. Yes, even greater things. I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. George Washington Carver did that. You and I can do that. We can see the unlimited unlocked in our lives as we stop whining and start becoming winners 
and let the power of God flow in us and through us. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. And welcome back. As Greg Carr says, we're going to have one of the students, Nasia Johnson. Ms. Johnson, welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine. The, the camera's yours, the mic is yours, the show is yours. Um, so my question for you um, would be, who were some of the early um, women um, in radio in St. Louis? Can you tell me a little bit about them and um, how they got started? Yes, actually, so the first one in the area was uh, Gracie, um, and she was the, the, at KTZ. But before her was Yvonne Daniels, who was actually in WBBR in East St. Louis, Illinois. She's the daughter of Billy Daniels, the wonderful, famous singer who made uh, some many, many big records. And uh, so she was, she and E. Rodney Jones were at WBBR in East St. Louis. And see, she finally took, moved to Chicago. But uh, Gracie Lowry was the first woman who has, is accredited with being in the first position as a broadcaster. She was actually a secretary at KATZ Radio 1600 on the dial. And uh, then she became involved with the National Association of Television Radio Announcers, which was the fraternity of black announcers uh, in, in the country. And uh, she was promoted to an announcer. She started running the, the radio station as an announcer, and uh, she became very, very prominent. Others were Paul Watt, Dada Lindsay, who was a gospel uh, personality at KATZ. And so they, these were sort of the, the pioneers of uh, black radio in St. Louis. Then later on, there was uh, EDB, who's still on the air, EDB Anderson now. She was EDB Boatner then. And, uh, and others, uh, Carol Carper. There's so many, but uh, they, they were, those were the trailblazers. A couple other uh, female announcers in the area were Denise Williams. Denise was on uh, WESL. And there was Cheryl Winston who was on KATZ and also Z100 FM. Now these two young ladies also were considered trailblazers because they were pioneers in the industry and they wanted to do wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things. You know, the, the wonderful thing about uh, being a female in radio and television now is that there are no limits. So uh, Ms. Anderson, what, what's your, what are your aspirations? Um, my aspirations are to um, practice law and um, to ultimately become a civil rights attorney. Um, I also want, want to become a judge at the state level. That's uh, what my aspirations are. That's wonderful. And do you think the communication department is going to help you achieve these goals that you're so asking for? Um, absolutely. I think that communication is effective in all areas, and um, I would um, be open to you know um, taking another uh, route possibly and looking into what a communications um, you know field could provide for me as well. Well this is wonderful so people will remember who you are. Spell your name for us. Um, my name is spelled N-I-A-J-A-H um, and it's pronounced Niasia um, that like the continent Asia and put Ni in front of it and my last name is Johnson. <laughs> and we'll be hearing about you and I'm sure you may be sitting where the black woman now is being nominated for the Supreme Court. Who knows? Yes, you may know. see you in the same seat. All right. Thank Good you. luck to you. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, how does it feel to be a Hornet at Harris Stowe State University? How how much you rate your your experience there? Um, well, I will be graduating in May, um, coming up soon, and um, I would say that the um, HBCU experience is definitely one like no other. Um, being a Hornet and um, being a part of um, Hornet Nation has definitely been a blessing um, with just the um, professors being so much like a family and uh, the students um, really wanting um, you to, to excel and really looking out for your, you know, your best interest. Well, how did you choose uh, communications as one of the minors, I guess? Is it, is it a major or is it a minor? Um, actually, communications is my major and I have a concentration in pre-law. Um, I chose communications because I wanted to improve my um, communication um, skills 
and I knew that that would probably be the best route um, as far as choosing a major. Being with Mr. Greg Carr, Professor Greg Carr, are there any aspirations for becoming an actress? Um, I've definitely now considered it. Um, that was something that I actually never thought about doing before. Um, but with some of the inspiration that he's given us in class and um, just, you know, different ideas and stuff, I definitely think that's something I may look into. Well, you know, if you want to be a trial lawyer or a judge and so forth, you'll have to do a little bit of acting because, uh, you know, that's going to have to convince juries and so forth. You have to convince uh, clients. You have to convince plaintiffs and and everything else. I mean, that's part of acting, too, I assume, because you have to really have some wonderful journalist skills for that. Absolutely. Are you preparing for that? Um, as far as, I guess, um, incorporating the acting skills, it's something that <laughs> will take some practice, but I certainly think that um, I will um, you know, be prepared for it. Wonderful. What are the other courses that you're taking at Harris Stone? Um, well, because I'm a, um, going to be graduating soon, I'm taking a lot more play classes, like playwriting, and um, also taking a small group uh, communication course. Um, but mostly just everything just to fill in those requirements, graduation requirements, um, to ensure that I graduate. And what's in your postgraduate future? Um, well, I just, like I said before, I want to be a lawyer. Um, during um, the time that I have off, my intention is to study for the LSAT, um, and so that's definitely going to take up some of my time. Um, but in the meantime, I'm um, looking into um, interning at a law firm. Mm. And the other students in, in your particular class right now, the communications class, do you all kind of, is there a bond between the, uh, each of you? Do you communicate with each other? Um, yes, we definitely um, communicate, um, and there is somewhat of a bond. Um, we, some of the students um, I do see around campus, so I, you know, I do say hi and um, check in on them. Um, but we definitely have um, some good laughs. So, Are you prepared for gender discrimination? Um, that's something that I think that um, I can prepare for. Um, I'm not necessarily... I mean, I'm a woman uh, advocate for women, especially black women. So I, I think that anything that comes my way, I'd be prepared for when it comes to discrimination against uh, a woman. Well, I think you're going to be very, very good. I think you're going to achieve your goal. And it's so nice for you to come, come here with us at here at New Life Evangelistic Center and ask me these questions. And uh, I lost all the luck in the world for you. If there's anything I can do to help you and anybody at you know, Harrisville, or any place in the world, I'm quite sure they'd be more than willing to do so. Thank Good luck to you. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Thank you. And we'll be right back after these messages. As we celebrate 50 years of God's faithfulness, how I thank God for all the years that we've been able to work side by side with Bernie Hayes. What a blessing this man has been. And what a blessing all of you all have been as you've continued to partner with New Life Evangelistic Center so we can feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, reach out and be a family to those that have no family at all. Now as we're celebrating 50 years of God's faithfulness, I'm asking you to pray that we can get back in the 1411 locust at this particular moment. It was such a hideous crime when rich folks move in the neighborhood, shut that building down and put the homeless on the street. So many are suffering out there. Now, if you'd like myself or my grandson, Chris Aaron, to come and share with your church or business or group, please call us at 314-421-302. Yes, we're celebrating 50 years of God's faithfulness, thanking God for Bernie Hayes and all of his supporters and all of you that have been praying. The door's open now. We want to move into 1411 Locust. We've got to complete the work. Through your prayers, through your involvement, we can make a difference. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. Our Black History subject for today is Canada Lee, who was born May 3rd, 1907, in New York City. At the age of 14, he ran away to the Saratoga Racetrack in upstate New York to become a jockey. In 1923, he moved to Harlem to become an amateur prize fighter. In over 200 fights as a professional, he lost only 25. In 1934, he turned to motion picture acting. In 1935, at the age of 28, he played a stevedore named Charlie in Alfred Hitchcock's movie Lifeboat. Despite that success on the late silver screen, Lee returned to the theater and won his first critical acclaim as Banquo in the Federal Theater's black version of Macbeth. In 1941, Lee played Bigger Thomas in the film Native Son to a great critical and popular acclaim. 
He appeared in six other movies throughout the 40s. He played a sailor and prize fighter in Body and Soul in 1947 and candidly died of a heart attack May 9, 1952. He had collapsed in Africa at the ending of the filming Cry the Beloved Country, where he played the lead actor, Canada Lee. Christ has risen from the dead. We have every opportunity now to live like him because he has set us free from the bondage of sin and death. So as we look to the cross and the humility that Jesus expressed there, we can serve others well. We can love others well. We can fill the needs of the community around us that God has so graciously placed us in. There is purpose in the cross. There is power in the cross. We can finally live with the humility that Christ Jesus expressed in the world today. Are you building others up around you? Are you living, considering the needs of others more important than yourself? Do this. Christ is risen, and you will too in the last days in heaven. And welcome back. In this segment, we have Crystal Reeves, also from the Communication Department. And uh, Crystal, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Well, why did you decide to uh, become a broadcaster or get in the Communication Department? And um, this, this actually, thing? my major is in communications. It is sociology, but it's all it all comes the same. Okay, I see you're wearing Boys in the Hood. Uh, the 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 T-shirt there. So, uh, yes. So, so are you interested in movies and also? Um, yes, I am. Well, tell me how you think communication is going to help you in your career. Um, I really think that communication is going to really help me in my career because I have to really talk to people, I have to get to know them, use my words, and if I don't have communication to use my words to talk to people, no one will understand what I'm coming from and what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Crystal, how did you choose your your profession? How did you choose your major? Um. Quite frankly, how I chose it, I actually watched a lot of TV and movies, and I seen that, hey, I kind of want to do that, and that seems a little bit interesting. And I actually went to hair store, and I talked to a... a, a one of the counselors? One of the counselors, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told them what I wanted to do, and they say, oh, well, this is a good fit for you. You should try to do this. And so that's how I got into it. So how do they treat you there at hair store? Very well. Uh -huh. So, what are your main ambitions? I mean, what do you hope to do? What, what, step by step, give it to me. Um, well, I hope to graduate in May. After I graduate, I hope to be a probably a juvenile probation officer in, in that type of field, mm -hmm. and hopefully, be the best that I can be, and be probably famous and doing everybody's bad children. <laughs> and I can be everybody's probation officer. <laughs> Was Greg Carr, how much help has he given you, especially in this field of communications? Um, he has been a big help. He's been a really big help really since freshman year, since I first had him in public speaking, and ever since then it's just been a blast having him as a professor. As a young girl, did you write poetry or songs and so forth? Um, I wanted to get into it, but I guess more of society, I felt like maybe no one really cared about it. Well, the music that you listen to now, do you think you can write that as good as that or even better? Yes. Tell me about it. Today's music, I don't know. They just say anything. And I feel like I can make a song. If I can make a song and they can make a song just about anything, I can make a song about anything. I can make a song about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if I really could. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your classes, what other courses are you taking at Harris Stowe? Um, right now, I'm actually taking a juvenile law class and a lot of sociology classes like social deviance, social justice, criminal justice, and things like that. What are you trying to do to sociology itself? Um, I actually watched a lot of Criminal Minds, and I liked how it worked. Okay, do you think you perhaps uh, taking this communication course, perhaps you can write a series or one of the stories for Criminal Minds? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, from being inside this directing class, I feel like I've learned more and I can actually, from the background that I've seen watching Criminal Minds and doing the directing class and everything else and getting all the information from this class, I feel like I can make my own, my own, uh, maybe an episode or two, maybe a season, a whole movie, 
okay. if I could. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Um, yes. Okay, uh, Crystal, go ahead. Shoot them. What was the, really the first radio station that started to play hip-hop and rap for the younger audience to listen to? You mean in the St. Louis area or in the country? In the St. Louis area. Oh, in the St. Louis area? Well, actually, there were three different stations, and we all played about the same different same time. And uh, that was KWK, which is 1380. Mm -hmm. uh, I was program director there. And there's KATZ, which was 1600. And Z100 was a sister station. And then in East St. Louis, it was WESL. And uh, in WESL, you had Jim Gates and Jockenstein and... Boogeyman Brown and EDB, JW, James Williams, uh, and so many more. At uh, KATZ, there was Doug Eason, who was the general manager there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you had uh, so many other than radio pioneers there. Lou Times was there. And over at KWK, we had uh, Don Johnson, who went on to Channel 2, you know, and Channel 4 as, as a broadcaster, newscaster. We had, oh, also there was uh, KKSS. And uh, we did some wonderful things at KKSS that we'll perhaps talk about later. But uh, Scotty Lawrence, Dr. Robert Salter now. Uh, and there was, uh, at KWK, there was Al Waples and Don St. John. So, so many people that you, perhaps your parents and grandparents would know because uh, we were trailblazers ourselves. We call ourselves pioneers. And that's why there is at Aristotle State University now the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. And uh, I hope that you come down someday and visit it and see all the wonderful rewards that we have and, and plaques and uh, accommodations. And it's going to be a really wonderful thing. Does that answer one of your questions? I'm sure you have another one. Um, actually, I do have another one. Sure. Do you re do you like listen to recent rap music, or do you have a favorite rap artist today you, that you, know, you actually listen to? Uh, not a particular rap artist. I like mm -hmm. most rap music. I, I, I don't, but I'm not uh, really up on the, the, the nasty stuff, you know? Uh, and I was quite surprised when Snoop Dogg and uh, 50 Cent were featured in the, the Super Bowl mm -hmm. because of their past performances, you know, the past disregard for women, their, their past uh, uh, music. And I was quite surprised that uh, they were there. Mary J. Blige, uh, you know, was, was wonderful. But uh, there's no rap artist, Snoop Dogg, and uh, you got the young man across your chest there from Boys in the Hood. Oh, Ice Cube, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ice Cube and Ice T are oh, 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 great, great, they're, they're geniuses, you know, but I just wish they would channel their music to a more positive audience, and mm -hmm. the demographic that they, they, they have uh, can be such a wonderful thing, they, they could just do so much better, in my opinion. Okay. So, does that answer that question? Yes. Well, let me have a question for you. What do you think about what I just said about those artists being on the Super Bowl? Um, I actually feel like they did a great job. Uh, I do know that some of the artists were underneath Dr. Dre, and I know those like very older artists that people my age don't listen to, mm -hmm. but it, it, there are good artists that you can listen to. They don't really the great women talking about doing all this other stuff, mm -hmm. all inappropriate things and things like that. They're really talking about things that they went through in South Central L.A. Yeah. and stuff like that. Well, when Dre was with N.W.A., he, he was a, an activist then, and mm -hmm. he's still activist. And uh, I think Dre, and, and even Snoop is, is turning the corner now. Troop is, Snoop is becoming more of a mainstream person, uh, a, a positive person, in my opinion. And I just want to say thank you to you, and to each and every one of you for viewing this particular segment. And I sincerely hope that uh, you got something from these wonderful students. And uh, we'll be back next time with something wonderful from the New Life Evangelist Center. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day. And don't forget now, if you're not vaccinated, it's very important that you get your shots. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Get your vaccinations. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day.